I'm Dr Julie Abbott and I'm a lecturer in marketing at Aberystwyth University and I want to just take a few minutes to go through uh, what I've done in my career since leaving Chile Hume School and what it's like to have a career in higher education. So just to uh, clarify what I'm going to talk to you about is just a, a bit about what my career path's been, um, what my current role involves, what, that, what it's all about being a lecturer in marketing. And then when we look at the higher education sector or the HE sector as a whole, what opportunities are there, are there for you if you wanted to work in that sector, what skills you'd need and qualifications, how it might change in the future, and just a bit of advice about starting out in higher education. So my career path, well, first of all, don't do what I did. I um, I made a really silly move um, and left Cheadle Hume School after taking my four O levels in uh, the fourth year, which is now year 10, um, but before taking the other five, which was in year 11, because I thought it was a really great idea to go and do the summer season in Cornwall. And actually it turned out to be a really dumb thing to do because when I got back after the career, after the uh, um, season finished I ended up stuck there in November with not a great deal of things to do and I managed to get myself a job and I ended up working for a company called Ferranti which made um, parts for, for computers actually and um, I was just going to be a general assistant really but I decided that I was not going to do that and I fought my way to working into the computer room which I loved, I was a computer operator, right at the very beginning of um, commercial computers really, so I learned an awful lot there. And I fought my way through the IT industry, and I mean fought, because that was at a time when it was all men that were in the IT industry, and I was often, pretty much always, the only woman in there until I ended up working for IBM um, in the very late 1980s. And um, I worked there for 16 years and I did a variety of roles, um, technical ones in the main. I was a systems engineer, I was a technical support for the UK for a couple of, of their products. Um, and then I went into marketing with them, technical marketing. And I was a market manager for Europe, Middle East and Africa for a product called SAP um, on the IBM mainframes or the, the, the major servers as, as we think about them today. When I left IBM, I um, went on to become a marketing consultant and I used the experience I'd had um, in IBM and, and a lot of that was of managing teams that were across EMEA, across Europe, Middle East and Africa. So I would have a team made up with somebody from France, Spain, Italy, and Netherlands and so on and so forth and have to manage them remotely. And, and that gave me a lot of skills uh, in looking after different people and, and being able to pick up problems very quickly and also dealing with people with a lot of different cultures and cultural backgrounds. So when I went into marketing consultancy then, this was with small and medium enterprises or SMEs as we call them. And working for my, yourself is very different from working for a global blue chip, believe me. So I spent a lot of time working on my business as well as working in my business. And I had a variety of um, uh, clients from a whole range of different sectors, but manufacturing is something that's sort of been with me all through my career. And um, so I did a lot with small manufacturing companies and still do today. So I did that for a while and whilst I was um, a marketing consultant, I also started to become an examiner for the Chartered Institute of Marketing and um, also uh, a visiting lecturer at um, a number of business schools in the UK such as Manchester, Cranfield, Birmingham and so on. I'm now a senior examiner for the Chartered Institute of Marketing on their um, diploma for, uh, for, um, for marketing and it's something I think that if you want to get into marketing it's something that you really should look at as well as doing some academic qualifications is to do some uh, professional qualifications as well. 
and um, I'm also now an independent assessor for marketing apprenticeships for them too. So um, I got the role as a marketing lecturer at Bristol University in 2010 and during that time um, I went out and to set up the project management uh, unit there at the university and as part of that role I became interim marketing director with about 40 staff working for me and I did that for a couple of years before coming back into the business school as a marketing lecturer and I've been in the business school now for a couple of years and I love it. Along the way I've picked up a number of qualifications um, so I have my PhD, I have a, a Master of Arts in Marketing particularly, particularly in CRM I've got the postgraduate teaching certificate in higher education. I've been through a lot of CIM professional qualifications and I have my professional postgraduate diploma. And um, I'm a fellow of the Chartered Institute of Marketing, a fellow of the Higher Education Authority, and I'm a chartered marketer as well. And I have to do at least 35 hours uh, CPD um, every year to keep my qualification up and to keep my chartered status. So my current role is lecturer in marketing and I teach at all levels so that's from first year undergraduate all the way through to postgraduate as well. I supervise students at all levels again undergrad, mag uh, masters and PhD in their dissertations and thesis and, and their, their different levels of research. When I get time, I'm not on a research contract, but when I get time, I do some research and I love to write academic articles and book chapters. Uh, and I've had around 30 published to date over the years. This is from my time in IBM all the way through to the present date. I'm a personal tutor. We all, we all have uh, personal tutees. So I have a number of students that I, I look after from them coming to the university until they leave and that's really lovely to do. It, I help to sort of coach them and bring them on and look after them. Um, we do of course write assessments uh, such as exams and mark them and, and, and we second mark as well so one of us will first mark everything and then somebody else will, will second mark as a check and balance to make sure everything's okay. And of course, from time to time, there are lots of different sorts of projects we get involved in with different colleagues throughout the university. So what are the career opportunities? Well, they're pretty good in, on the whole, really. And um, you can do an academic role uh, with or without research, such as, as I do, but then also support roles. So you know, think about the university as a huge organisation that the core of it is, is teaching and looking after students. But then there's a lot of stuff around that. So we have hospitality, you know, looking after the student halls, um, the, the cafeterias and so on and so forth. We have conference facilities, there's student support and well-being, uh, there's a student union, there are shops on site, there's marketing the university, there are all the finance side of things as well. And all the other roles that you'd expect in a large organisation, such as human resources. So there are quite a lot of areas that you can go into in a career. Um, and of course, estates, you know, um, university campuses have an awful lot of buildings that have, need looking after. And often what we find is our students at Aberystwyth um, come and stay with us. They'll, they'll study with us. They might take on some part-time roles working on campus whilst they're studying. And then they stay on and have a career with us afterwards. So it's, it's really lovely to see students uh, coming in and I'm not wanting to leave actually, which is uh, it's always a good sign for a university. So what do you need? What skills do you need? Well, there are skills and qualifications. So they're two different things. So, and, and both depend on the sorts of roles that you want to take on. So you need things that are relevant to the role because again, working in a university, as I said before, there are quite a number of roles, so again, it's skills and qualifications dependent. So if you were going in for a marketing role, you'd probably need a marketing degree or at least CIM qualifications and probably some experience as well. If you're going in to become an academic, you'd probably need to have a PhD or at least be working towards one. 
if you're a lecturer then you would um, need qualifications again academic qualifications such as a PhD or the um, teaching qualification in higher education the PGCTHE it's important to really know your subject and you've got to be happy to stand up in front of an audience and in particular, you need to be able to engage with that audience as well, whether that's an audience of, of, of a number of students or you're working one to one with a student. You therefore need to have a bit of patience around you and the confidence as well, because they look up to you. Students will look up to you. They expect you to know everything. And of course, we never do. Nobody knows everything. So we have to have the confidence to be able to say, actually, you know, that's a really great question. Let me come back to you on this because I don't know the answer. And, and, and sometimes that's, that's quite difficult to do. So what might be happening that changes in the sector? Well, potentially to move to um, an online learning, such as uh, we see in, in other areas at the moment, particularly um, with the big change that's come across with learning in, in the present difficulties with the coronavirus. So we might see more of a move to online or certainly what we call blended learning, which is a, a mixture of um, classroom based learning as well as online. In appropriate areas, we'll probably see more work based learning, such as a graduate apprenticeships. So if you're, you're a business student, you might find that you go into business and then um, do some apprenticeships uh, and take your um, degrees through your workplace. It's more likely we'll see some more specialist degrees and potentially specialist universities as well coming along. But we don't know. It's just one of those areas that we will watch this space and see what goes on. But whether the sector stays the same, which it's unlikely to, or moves along in different ways, it's a really exciting, interesting place to be. So advice for working in higher education, the first thing is you've got to be really interested in your subject because you know, even if you haven't got um, a research contract, you will be working and doing some research in there because you have to keep ahead of the game. If you're teaching people your subject, you've got to really understand it and, and know the latest and greatest within that area. So try and, you know, go and study at university first, you know, go and find out and, and really get um, a degree and qualifications within the subject that you're, you're interested in. Keep an eye on what's going on in, in higher education. So look at jobs.ac.uk or look at if there's a particular university you might want to work in. Go and have a look at their website because there are often jobs and roles on there and you can start to see what's available. You need to enjoy working with other people and particularly with young people, with students, because they have a great view on life. You know, when you've, you've come into an, an area and you've, worked in particular potentially other sectors and you might be a bit jaded students are not and it's fantastic working with them but you've also got to be happy to work alone as well because we would do a lot of work on our own researching uh, developing new um, learning materials for our students and you have to be good at being uh, self-motivated and finishing uh, projects off we have to be flexible and of course when because we're working with lots of different people and who might have concerns and problems at some time or other you have to be patient with them and you have to be empathetic as well and in order to keep that interest in your subject you've got to keep wanting to learn you've got to be the sort of person that wants to learn and finally it's absolutely an amazing sector to be in it's it's great no two days are ever the same. You work with lots of different people all the time. It's really, really enjoyable. So I would advise anybody with a deep interest in a particular area, have a go. It's a great place to be. But finally, whatever career you end up in, because there is such a choice out there for you guys. But if you want to succeed, you've got to work hard in whatever you do. And... The important thing is to have fun. 
in your job, hopefully, because you spend a lot of your days working, but also outside. Take time out to recharge your batteries, doing something you really enjoy. And I put a photograph up here of what I do to recharge my batteries, and I compete in endurance riding. And uh, this is a photograph of me coming in after riding uh, about 80k, I think we'd done that day, which is about 50 miles. And uh, we've both got a smile on our faces, and that's what it's about, having fun. So good luck to you. And thank you very much for listening. Good luck and thank you.